This is the off-ramp from the 805 North HOV lane. It's right next to the on-ramp for the southbound HOV. The big question is, did the driver of that black McLaren take the wrong ramp by mistake or on purpose? When he got to the top of the ramp, this was the result. A fiery crash that killed not only Trevor Heitman, but also a mother and daughter in his car's path. Hello, female males and male females. Your favorite male here, Internet J. In this YouTube.com, I will be discussing the tragic story of McSkillet. And no, I am not referring to some bizarre McDonald's creation, but rather a person. McSkillet was a CSGO YouTuber with about 800,000 subscribers. In fact, his channel is still up as of today. Sadly though, McSkillet killed himself in a car crash involving his McLaren 650S. The accident also ended the lives of a mother and her daughter. McSkillet's friends claimed he suffered from depression while his parents mentioned he experienced mania. This is the unfortunate death of McSkillet. Before I get into it, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a place to begin or deepen your relationship with fragrances to discover your style and build your collection. They let you choose a new designer fragrance to try each month for just $17. To release this scent, just twist and press. They have perfumes and colognes and a lot of unisex options. Oh, and each bottle has really large vials. You get a 30-day supply with every scent so you can try out fragrances before committing to a full-size bottle. You can discover new fragrances by taking a simple quiz on Scentbird. Make sure to use my coupon code INTERNETAJ for 55% off. It's just a little over $7 for your first month. Available in the US and Canada. This month I received Electric Wood by Room 1015, Vince Camuto Home by Intenso, and Bespoke by Joseph Abode. Thank you Scentbird for partnering with me on this video, please check out the links below. McSkillet, aka Trevor Heitman, grew up in sunny San Diego, California. He was raised in a pretty upper class suburban neighborhood. At a young age he found himself interested in video games. He also liked content creation, so naturally YouTube was a perfect fit for him. So on February 14, 2014, he created his own channel. That's right, while some were getting dinner on Valentine's Day, Heitman was hustling online. As a new YouTuber, he wanted to find something palpable to make himself stand out. After all, there were tons of gaming YouTubers on the platform already. Trevor was particularly interested in the game Counter-Strike Global Offensive aka CSGO. He had quite an intimate knowledge of the game as well as its culture. Trevor was aware that players like to collect and trade skins which are essentially weapons with different textures. They are entirely cosmetic and have no real gameplay function. But that didn't stop people from wanting them. I mean skins looked cool, players could show them off, and they improved the community experience. Realizing interest in skins was higher than Jesse Pinkman on Crystal Meth, Heitman released his first video called CSGO Top 10 Most Expensive Skins and Rare Weapons 2015 Counter-Strike Rarest Knives and Skins. In it, he provided a list Matthew Santoro style. What's going on everyone, this is McSkillet here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys the top 10 most expensive and most rare skins for CSGO. The first video on the channel for most YouTubers is usually the one with the lowest views, but that wasn't the case for McSkillet. His video exploded and currently has over 1 million views. Hitting the iron while it was hot, Trevor continued to upload videos about skins as if he was a dermatologist. There was rarest weapon skin patterns, best cheap skins, and rarest souvenir skins. McSkillet discovered a niche and consistently generated several hundred thousand views on average. His succinct synopses paired with his smooth voice proved to be a combo as classic as me and loneliness. Unsurprisingly, his channel took off and four months later in August 2015, he celebrated 100,000 subscribers. Trevor got so big, he even collaborated with Leafy and referred to him as a friend. When McSkillet was just 16 years old, he started receiving sponsorships from CSGO Wild and other gambling websites. Over time, the money and views just poured in. By July 2016, he reached an insane 600,000 subscribers. And in late 2017, he showed off his new McLaren 650S, which was quite stunning. It definitely made my current mode of transportation, the standard auto rickshaw, look terrible. Attempting to make more of a profit, Trevor launched his own gambling website, CSGO Magic, in 2018. You see, McSkillet pioneered a unique strategy. He made videos about CSGO skins, which raised awareness and interest in them. Trevor then capitalized on his large fan base who already liked CSGO skins by luring them to his gambling website. I guess you could say he killed two gamers with one skin. This allowed him to generate a fortune as CSGO gambling websites were incredibly popular and lucrative at the time. For example, FaZe Banks mentioned he earned about $200,000 a day from his. People started creating these, um, these like gambling sites where you could gamble with these skins. So we create this website and um, through our rake and all this shit, 
Um, we were making like $200,000 a day. Trevor's father later told police he made a massive $4 million in 10 months. He made $4 million in 10 months. McSkillet once even bragged about his $100,000 plus CSGO collection after someone claimed he faked one of his giveaways. Kid, I have 100k plus CSGO inventory. You think it's worth my time or reputation to fake cheap max 3k giveaways? Most of them are sponsored too. In March 2018, Trevor's world came crashing down when Valve implemented a 7 day cooldown to all traded items in CSGO. It was supposedly done to prevent negative unintended uses of trading such as frauds and scams. However, the cooldown handicapped CSGO gambling websites worse than a paraplegic getting hit by a bus. That's because they relied heavily on quick transfers between bots, so 7 days was like a century. As a result of everything, the market for skins crashed hard. Even OP Skins, the go-to website for buying and selling skins, got obliterated. To make matters worse, there was an additional ban wave which resulted in McSkillet getting banned on his main account. According to Sparkles, another CSGO YouTuber, this happened because Trevor created a CSGO magic bot with the same phone number as his main one. So when the CSGO magic bot was banned, so were all of the associated accounts. This meant McSkillet's $100,000 plus skin collection was locked. Sparkles even made an 11 minute video showing it off. His website was also banned which resulted in a complete loss of revenue. Unfortunately, McSkillet felt powerless and retired from making content on YouTube. In August 2018, Heitman's mental illness began to surface. Around that time, the mother of one of his friends revealed he got a message from McSkillet rambling and spewing. She said, while Trevor had many fans worldwide, her son was one of his few friends. According to her, Heitman didn't graduate from La Jolla Country Day School. As Heitman saw his few friends going off to college, he felt he was left alone at home. He was then trade banned, his website and merchandise websites all shut down. His income stopped. She told 10 News her son got messages from Heitman a few weeks ago, rambling and spewing irrational thoughts. Then on August 21st, Heitman told his mother that he drove his McLaren 150 miles per hour in a 25 zone. On August 21st, he told his mother that he drove his McLaren 150 miles per hour in a 25 zone. When his dad asked what if the police caught him, he merely replied neither the police nor their bullets could hurt him. Everything erupted on August 23rd, 2018 when Heitman threatened to harm his mother, sobbed and screamed. This worried his parents pretty bad. So they contacted a family friend who was a psychiatrist. She then informed the police Trevor was a danger to himself and others. Hello, 911. I'm calling to report an emergency. I believe there's an individual who is a danger to himself and a danger to others. I do believe that he is suffering from a mental illness. Consequently, three officers went to his house while he was sleeping upstairs. His parents quickly told them he showed signs of manic behavior. So he's got manic behavior. He's never been diagnosed. Which I, he needs to go into a doctor. However, the police couldn't detain him because he didn't meet certain legal criteria. Before you start, ma'am, there's a criteria. He has to be he has to be gravely disabled. He has to have a credible threat against somebody. He has to have or harmful to his own self. There's only certain criteria that we can take him under. In an attempt to stop McSkillet from leaving his house, his father blocked his car in with his own. However, when Trevor woke up, he told his family he had to go. When Trevor's dad said he couldn't leave, McSkillet ignored him, got into his McLaren, and rammed his dad's car out of the way. Heitman then broke through a gate at Ashley Falls Elementary. He went onto a field and almost hit a student who was getting a ball. He came around the corner and he drove up right on the edge of the field where my teammate was. And she was just getting a ball and he almost hit her. Witnesses then reported he then got out of the car, smashed a window and left. There was even a recorded confrontation between McSkillet and a parent. You know you're driving in a school zone, right? What did he just say? Did he pick that off to you? Something's wrong with him. He's coming back! He's coming back! on your campus right now driving in a sports car chasing after the kids i mean there is a crazy ass call 911 right now oh.
Horrifically, about 20 minutes later at 4.40 p.m., Heitman drove over 100 miles per hour down the northbound 805 freeway going in the wrong direction. He then slammed headfirst into a Hyundai SUV, killing 43-year-old Eileen Pizarro and her 12-year-old daughter in a fiery explosion. Other cars hit the wreckage, causing at least one serious injury. The damage was so bad, the entire freeway was shut down for 10 hours. The deceased mother, Eileen Pizarro, was a marriage and family counselor working to become a licensed therapist. Her son, Dominic, said her passion was helping children who had been removed from abusive homes. Eileen's deceased 12-year-old daughter wanted to be a jazz singer when she grew up. She was supposed to start 7th grade just 4 days after the accident. Fortunately, a GoFundMe for the family raised over $22,000, greatly surpassing the initial goal. The situation shocked the YouTube and San Diego community alike. The news made headlines practically everywhere. In October 2018, an autopsy report concluded that Heitman's death was a suicide. It was thought he was devastated after the collapse of his YouTube channel and website. Trevor's parents also noted that shortly before his death, he showed signs of mania while his friends claimed he experienced depression. However, many people were upset Trevor had the audacity to take two people with him instead of dying alone. Dwayne The Rock Johnson even recorded a heartfelt message for Eileen's son. Dwayne Johnson here, and uh, I had turned on my phone, and I saw a flood, thousands and thousands of, uh, of tweets had come through, uh, informing me about the um, devastating loss that you and your family are going through with uh, your sister and your mom. Um, Ariana and Aileen, I think their names are, and I believe from what uh, I'm told, uh, your mom was a very, very big fan of mine. So anyway, man, I'm just, I'm sending you so much love and light and strength your way from my family to yours. And, um, and I just want to say thanks for reaching out, man. And, um, and I'm so sorry to hear about your sister and your mom and this tragic loss that you and your family are going through. Personally, I think McSkillet's death deserves a more thorough discussion. I find it interesting Trevor didn't leave a suicide note nor expressed any suicidal intentions. And let's not forget that he told his father that, quote, neither the police nor their bullets could hurt him. It's possible McSkillet truly thought he was invincible while driving down the 805. At the very least, he was in a manic state and wasn't thinking rationally. While I do agree what happened was a catastrophic tragedy, I also believe Trevor was a victim of his own mental illness. I wish he received access to the appropriate mental health resources when he was saying things that didn't make sense to his friend a few weeks before the crash. Or when he revealed he drove 150 miles per hour a few days before. I think Trevor deserved to get professional care, which he unfortunately never received. In August 2019, the family of the victims actually sued McSkillet's estate, the city of San Diego, and the county of San Diego. They claimed the officers failed to act on warnings from his family and a psychiatrist, as well as for not interviewing Heitman to assess his condition. As of today, I am unaware of any conclusions to the lawsuit. Currently, McSkillet's $100,000 plus CSGO skin collection is still locked despite comments from others requesting for it to be sold to provide restitution to the victims. His YouTube channel is also currently still up. Overall, the whole story of McSkillet was extremely tragic and I wish it never happens again. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video.